In every country, there is a place natural enough to be artless and simple enough to be bold that captures the imagination and love of all who see it. Such a place is Peggy's Cove. Flanked by gigantic rocks, which act as anvil for the ocean's hammer, the cove is a busy fishing port. A favorite place for picnics and lobster broils, it is also a popular subject for countless paintings. When the huts, snake fences, and long-legged wharves are transferred to canvas, the result is witchery. No one visiting the cove will easily forget the marriage and warfare of rock and water. The tales of five islands are of land, sea, and legend. Today, the stories may be of the clam hunters who wait for the receding tide to uncover the widespread beds. Yesterday, the tales might have been of Glooskap, the Micmac Indian god. According to legend, the precipitous, mesa-like five islands came into being when Glooskap hurled five great handfuls of red earth at his ancient enemy, the beaver. The clams are located by pressing firmly upon the sands and watching for air bubbles to form. It's a work of love for adventurers who enjoy bare feet, old clothes, and a seafood lunch. An open-air barbecue for chicken or steak is far from a novelty but a giant barbecue where thousands of golden chickens meet their hungry admirers en masse is king-size treatment. At Truro, the emphasis is on appetite. The feast is waged until hunger disappears on legs of chicken. Annapolis is an old name and springtime an old feeling. When the season and the valley meet, romance is carried on the petals and the ageless miracle of spring is restaged. The gay spirit of the year's youngest season has carnival overtones. The Blossom Festival opens the door of springtide with a flourish. The merrymaking suggests an older valley people, the gallants of old France who found pleasure in community gatherings as they built their dikes to hold back the sea. The flowering orchards, which ring out to the laughter of queen and princesses, once echoed across open fields to the dinner calls for New Englander and Frenchmen as they planted the first apple seedlings. At Grand Pre, the festival puts on its ceremonial robes. Each valley town has selected its princess. From among these, the queen is carefully chosen. The occasion is one for suspense, speech-making, and military displays.
The homage to spring in Annapolis is gracious and fitting. Under the pretty face of Grand Pre, there is a deep religious undertone. Memories are long in Acadia. Across the yawning silence of 200 years, the Acadian Church of St. Charles has carried the torch of remembrance. The Acadian Bicentennial marks two centuries of belief in a single cause. Under the mask of time, the faith of a people has remained constant. Erecting tributes to its heroes, a nation recognizes its obligations. With the telling of the epic story of Evangeline, Longfellow enshrined himself in the world's heart and on the meadows of Grand Pre. Celebration committees usually look to other days and older events for their inspiration. At Annapolis Royal, the inspiration is ready-made. The wheels of time are turned back 350 years to recreate the storming of Fort Anne. With all the vigor of the original attack, history is again given its day of action. of battle has become entangled with hot dog stands and pop bottles. And both victor and vanquished retire gracefully to the refreshment booths to rearm the inner man. No story of the land would be complete without the Scot. With dancing sporan and whirling kilt, he takes his love from the tartan and his joy from the pipes. and a rover, 
the Scot has taken his plaid and his music around the earth. In the highlands of Cape Breton, he found the image of his homeland and fashioned a new craft among the hills to match the old. On the 13th of August, 1955, time stood still for Cape Breton. A hundred pipers with the bright path of the Canso Causeway ahead piped their way into history and officially opened the new marine highway. isolation of the Celtic Isle is now a thing of the past. With thousands of tons of rock, the Strait of Canso is bridged and a divided land made whole. Into the privacy of fishing hamlet and sword fishing cove, into primeval hills and remote seascapes, the causeway opens swift passage. The box of Cape Breton treasures is open for all to sample, and in sampling, to carry away a bit of the Gaelic heart. Kiad Miol Failte, a hundred thousand welcome. of the land that stretches outward from Citadel Hill are often told. In their telling, old truths are reconfirmed. The physical charm, the happy flow of people and events, the enchantment of high road and trail, the courage and culture, challenge and accomplishment, these are real verities strung on ancient threads. Who am I? What is my name? My secret is no longer hidden, for my separate parts are known to many. The sea gave me life, and the hills gave me form. My crown is the highlands, my scepter the rivers, and my robes the carpeted valleys. A land of first things, I am many things to many people, home, host, and helpmate. My name is Nova Scotia, and in the spirit of my youth, I can see the retold tales of my past and the promise of my future.